what I would like to study after my high school. Uh, actually, I was really thinking about the environmental sciences in general. But when uh, I had uh, a limited choice of um, uh, specializations, uh, for example, I didn't have the exams in biology and so on, so I chose to study geography with a spe uh, specialization in uh, meteorology. And actually after the first two months I was really fascinated and I thought that yes, this is the, the place I would like to be. And during uh, the studies uh, you learn uh, very different uh, subjects, starting from physics, chemistry, uh, physical geography. But also I think it's uh, for this profession it's, it is uh, very important, important uh, uh, computer sciences and uh, programming. I think definitely if you want to pursue a career in meteorology, you have to study programming uh, because uh, now there are a lot of data which is available and if you want to make a good uh, weather model uh, or climate model, you need a lot of data and you need to know uh, how computer, computers work and uh, you, you have to know at least one programming language. I was working in the National Meteorological Services for six years as a climatologist uh, but I'll, during that time I did the internship in, uh, in Switzerland, in Meteo Swiss. And they, in, in Switzerland I was working with the uh, satellite data. And they were using the satellite data for the, uh, building the climatological time series. And I got really fascinated with the remote sensing and with the satellite data. And I started to, to think about the uh, research career. So that was the, the time when I started to think maybe I should go and then do my PhD. As a meteorologist or the weather forecasters who are working in the National Meteorological Services, they have very structured uh, day and they have a very clear responsibilities. And for example, if you are the weather forecaster and you come to your ship, uh, the first thing you do, you uh, ask your colleagues what was happening during the day or the night, what, are, what is the situation, the current situation of the weather, of the atmosphere, and then you prepare your own forecast, and then you have to communicate that with the radio and TV. So one thing is that uh, you, uh, you have to analyze a lot of data, and then you have to communicate that to the public. And so every day during your uh, shift as a weather forecaster, you actually have one or two interviews with radio or uh, TV. And um, folks, uh, on another side, for example, meteorologists who are working with uh, data collection, they also have a uh, very clear s structure of the day. Then you come, actually every three hours there are uh, transfer of the data of meteorological measurements to the uh, vault data centers. So you have to take care that all the data collected in your country, for example in Lithuania, that it reaches the, the vault uh, data centers and that can, everybody can get um, this data which are afterwards used for weather forecasts or the weather models. And as a climatologist, if you work for national med services, uh, then in, you have more flex, you are more flexible compared to the meteorologist or the weather forecasters, but still, uh, depending on your responsibility, uh, your, day, your day can start, for example, from uh, checking your weather and climate models if they are working properly, and you also may. You, you interact a lot of with different stakeholders who are asking uh, a lot of information about the uh, meteorological and climatological data. For example, uh, in Lithuania we used to uh, communicate a lot with uh, insurance companies. If there is an accident, they always ask what was the weather and we have to collect this data and send to them. Uh, so the transport companies, they asking about the minimum maximum temperatures and uh, there are a lot of demand of this information and your, your working day is always uh, uh, scheduled actually by the meetings with the stakeholders or the new inquiries coming and, and uh, if they ask some uh, new information you, you have to do it uh, quite quickly and so as a climatologist when you come in the morning you are maybe not sure, so sure what you will do but it can be also very 
uh, has changing. Like in the morning, it could be uh, relaxed, and in the afternoon, you get a lot of inquiries, and uh, you have to react to it and send the information they need. I know that in, in Europe, in the uh, United States, there are private meteorological companies and they are uh, so consulting by insurance companies, they are consulting the road authorities. Uh, so definitely there are possibilities to, to um, start a business in, in meteorology and uh, also you can become like an independent consultant expert in, in your field in meteorology or climatology and a lot of companies who are um, make, who make the who are preparing the long-term strategies for their businesses they also started to um, count in the climate change issues for example and if you plan your activities for 30 years in advance actually you have to calculate also what will be the climate change effects on, on your business and then you need a climatology you, you need an expert in that field uh, so I think it's it's a growing field and there's more and more um, requests from different sectors industries which before was not uh, they were not so much interested in meteorology but nowadays uh, if you want to be very effective you actually have to count, count in the weather forecast and the, the long-term changes of the climate